Welcome to Michael Potts Photography, the story behind the photograph. William Blake wrote, If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is infinite. For man has closed himself up till he sees all things through narrow cracks of his cavern. In this video, I would like to discuss this long exposure image of a sculpture of a giant door. I've used an external light source to lead the viewer towards the door and a spotlight behind the area to try and create a sense of mystery, asking the question, what is behind the door? The sculpture is by British artist Gavin Turk. He is one of the young British artists that burst onto the scenes in the late 80s. It was a group that had a large impact on me while I was studying fine art at university. The sculpture is of an oversized, disembodied, nondescript domestic door placed seemingly completely out of context in a vineyard. It's cleverly titled Le Arge d'Or, which in French translates to the Golden Age. It's this positioning of an ordinary object in an unusual place which allows the viewer's imagination to run wild, to dream of a golden age that might be behind this very large door. The work is reminiscent of a painting by surrealist artist René Magritte entitled Victory, where a similarly large door is painted out of context on a coastal scene. In the painting, there is a cloud that entices the viewer through the door, and I've tried to replicate that in this photograph by using a trail of light. The sculpture is located in the Commandry de Parasol. I came across the sculpture in 2018. I was visiting the vineyard with my partner Ruth Kelly, who was researching her brilliant book, The Little Vineyard in Provence. It was a wonderful opportunity to stay at this delightful estate, to capture the beauty of the sunrise over the vines, the teams bringing in the harvest, and seeing all the spectacular art in situ was wonderful. While Ruth worked on the plot line for her book, I would wander all over the estate with my camera, taking photographs at every opportunity I could get. I found this artwork quite mesmerizing. It's fascinating seeing an object like this in a working vineyard. Somewhere that's so traditional, and a way somewhere that, that's so old. This whole estate feels very, very old. There's evidence of human occupation in this area going back 3,000 years. Back to the Iron Age. There's later evidence of Gallo-Roman farmers working the land. In 1204, it was donated by Alphonse II, who was Count of Provence to the Knights Templar. This was one of many parcels of land in the region administered by these warrior priests. There is a document recording the sale of wine produced here, dating back to 1256. The Rigord family acquired the estate in 1830. It was passed down the generations until it was inherited by Francois Rigord and her husband in the 1960s. She was instrumental in transforming Parasol into the vineyard it is today, known as Madame de Parasol or even Madame de Van. She was not only famous for exquisitely blending and crafting the estate's wines, but also went on a one-woman mission to establish Provence Rosé as a wine of excellence. This was a daunting challenge in a very traditional male-dominated industry. But since her 1981 vintage, Parasol has featured in the finest restaurants in Paris. In 2001, the estate was bought by Philippe Ostru, a wine lover who was able to invest heavily into the property, taking it to the next level of excellence. He was the one that introduced all these incredible sculptures, but he's also managed to retain the historic feeling of the land. From the dry stone walls to the terraces, the beautiful buildings, there's a wonderful blend of, of history and state-of-the-art technology. And, and you can see that through the whole winemaking process. There's this mix of traditional craft enhanced by modern technology. Today, Parasol produces some of the finest rosés in all of France. One of their more interesting wines is called 1204, which refers to the date that the estate was given to the Templars. The wine pays homage to the history of Parasol, and it gets its character from the very terroir that it's grown in. The grapes come from multiple plots, each with their own microclimates. This produces a highly complex but very easily drinkable wine. I took this image one morning in late September, and you can see in the background there's a light of men working in the fields. Here they pick the grapes while it's still dark to ensure they're picked at their best. My idea with this long exposure night shot of the door was to add a little bit of light effects to the side, and then to use a flash behind the door to create the sense of light coming from an unknown source. 
hopefully this would add a bit more mystery to what was behind the door. The image was taken with a Nikon D850. I'm using a 14 to 24 millimeter lens at focal length 14 millimeters. The ISO is 800 at f9 and the exposure time is 30 seconds. The starting image appears to be a bit dark and a bit bland. I've intentionally exposed the photograph to capture the lightest part of the sky. I shot this image on a tripod, but even still, it wasn't perfectly straight. So the first thing I did was to straighten the image in Lightroom, uh, and then added my landscape preset. What this does is it just sets the image up nicely for me to work on. As you can see, it's lightened it a lot, as well as done a bit to reduce the noise. I then cropped the image, so you're brought a lot closer to the door. Next, I worked on a bit of the color balancing. Here, I lightened the door, bringing it closer to an original white color. I darkened the image in several areas around the vines, making these a little bit more dramatic, and I made subtle changes to the night sky. From here, I ran two functions. One was to reduce the noise on the image, and the other was to sharpen. The sharpening tool actually sharpened the image a lot more than I really wanted. So I took it into Photoshop, and I created two layers, one with the unsharpened image on the top, and one with the sharpened image below. I then proceeded to raise the door, because that's the area that I wanted to be sharp, from the top image. This helps the subject jump out a lot more. Once I was happy with the overall structure of the image, I increased the dark tones in the foreground to make it a bit more dramatic. My final step was to remove a little bit of the dirt from the door. Not everything, because the artist intended the door to look weathered and used. It was not supposed to be a pristine door, so I've retained as much of that as possible without having anything that was overly distracting. And there is the final product. But it's not the end of the story, because a few years later, I was asked to exhibit this image, along with a few others that I had taken at Parasol, as part of La Pauli Festival in Corte Chalonaise. This is an amazing festival. It's the end of Harvest Festival in one of the most beautiful parts of Burgundy. And every year, as part of the festival, they have a photography exhibition, because this was the birthplace of photography as we know it. It's here that Nisiphore Nips created what we would recognize as the first photograph. And it's this wonderful moment of photographers celebrating winemakers and wine winemakers acknowledging photographers. There's a link in the description to a video on the Shadow Diaries giving a lot more detail of the festival and, and what happened during the exhibition. But it was a wonderful experience to see my work as part of a group exhibition with other fantastic photographers. There were giant posters of the photographs throughout town and it really looked spectacular. The festival is a must for any wine lover. This year it kicks off on the 20th of October and runs the whole weekend. If you can, I thoroughly recommend visiting. Here are some of my photographs showing the beauty of this area. All of the photographers who exhibited were awarded honorary memberships in one of the societies of mutual relief and wine brotherhoods of the Cote Chalonais. I was inducted into the Mercury Society for winemakers around the village of Mercury. This town was named after the Roman god Mercury and they produce spectacular red wines from Pinot Noir grapes. These tend to be dark, full-bodied, often spicy and sometimes with a hint of cherry. The area boasts 32 Premier Cru sites and it's known in the area as the Golden Valley. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Normally, I sell limited edition prints of the work discussed, but for this image, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Because of the journey these photographs have been on already, I've decided not to sell them as limited edition prints. But if you would like to own a copy of them, you can head over to my website where you can download a printable digital version for 10 euros. That's not just the primary work that's discussed, but it includes all of my images that you've seen in this video today. There is also a wide variety of wall art available, such as canvases and aluminium prints. There's a link in the description, so please do have a look around. And if you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe. Until the next one, goodbye.